Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Mining Weekly editor Martin Creamer joins me today to unpack the latest news in the mining industry. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Ashni. The 13th Oppenheimer Research Conference had a message for attendees, recycle like there's no tomorrow. You know, the whole atmosphere there was very important for not only South Africa, but the world. And there was a, a big African element as well. And we're talking about 450 scientists from all over the place and working on how do you combat climate change and what is the assessment of n the loss of nature. Now, they emphasized that loss of nature and they said, really, if you want to fix climate change, nature calls the shots. So you must treat nature the way it should be treated. And uh, what really concerned me when they indicated that, you know, the trees that have been removed uh, in the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, which is a lung, it's Africa's lung, are becoming alarming. Now, I don't know why we hear so much about uh, Brazil all the time and we never hear what's going on in the Congo. Now, I think it's got to stop that they remove trees like that uh, in an important lung of the whole continent. And in some way they must be perhaps compensated for the loss of what they do there, but it shouldn't be allowed to continue. But there are so many other aspects that they bring up there. It's a very important conference. You know, they have it once a year and it looks at the planet and how we're going to solve this problem. And one of the things they flashed across across the screen and it went up <laughs> just to, for the whole time that I was there, you know, is recycle, recycle. And um, that is something that we can do. You know, all of us can get involved in recycling. That will mean that there's less mining, that there's less digging, that things last longer. And I thought it was an important message that they flashed across. Now, can you tell us about developments on the Inyaza light metals plant at the Richards Bay Industrial Development Zone? You know, South Africa exports ilmenite, but the price that we get for ilmenite is only a tenth of the price that you can get if you beneficiate that uh, in titanium dioxide pigment, which is used in paints, it's used uh, in clothing, it's, you know, it's really a widespread use, and that price is pretty good, but we've never gone into that level of beneficiation, and it's quite difficult, and so you see you know, that this company, Nianza Light Metals in Santon, has really been working on this, you could say, for 18 years, probably more incessantly recently. But it was um, a sign of character where people don't give up there. Although they're saying that, you know, when we build it here in an industrial development zone, it costs more. So a lot of their financiers are saying, well, why is it costing so much? And they're saying because when you go into IDZs in China or Europe, facilities are there for you, which we are going to have to build, you know, to get them going. But they still seem determined and they've, you know, they've got funding now to do the, the earthworks. They're going ahead with that. And while we speak, they're trying to get more funding to do everything else. But it seems like it's coming into line. You know, the DFIs are coming behind it. And hopefully we will see this by 2027, an actual export of a high value add and we talk beneficiation, but it's not easy to do. And they are also looking to their own energy and their own mineralization, demineralization. So a lot of things they're having to do themselves. Lastly, tell us about the cost savings associated with the Mukhali City project in the West Rand that aims to recover gold from mine dumps. You see, again, this was something that crossed my mind as well when I was at the Oppenheimer function. You know, you've got all these mine dumps. Now, you want to restore nature. I mean, there should be a much bigger effort to remove these. And when you see what's happening with Pan-African resources in Mahali, I mean, they're doing it with such skill. They're creating wealth from that dust. And just by you know, bringing in a new uh, way of managing it, the EPCM contract instead of the EPC contract, they saved themselves 300 million. So, and the same team is involved. They've put up these plants in Barberton and Evander. And um, <coughs> so they really know how to do this. And hopefully they'll go ahead now with this Soweto cluster. But it would be wonderful if there was some sort of focus on this. Because if we could remove a lot of those dumps, it would uh, you know, recreate an environment where in parts of that there could be housing. And we see people traveling in taxis and you know, having to come from distances 
you know, if you could bring them closer to the city, it would make a big difference. So I think that Pan-African are doing a good job. Of course, DOD Gold does the same. We, we have Harmony wanting to do this. So there is a consciousness of that there's value in there. And at the same time, they create a lot of jobs and they also restore nature. So it's got so many benefits uh, that, that can come and I think there should be greater emphasis. But it was great to see if they just focus on this, they can cut costs too quite radically. Thanks for speaking with us, Martin. Thanks, Sashni. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Mining Weekly daily email newsletter.